Guy, what inspired you to invent this machine? Uh, flood threat, naturally. All right, well, here in Winnipeg, you're at the confluence of the Assiniboine and the Red, oh. and when they come up, the whole city feels it, right? You better believe it. So yes. you need to make a lot of sandbags. How does this machine make sandbags fast? Well, it can easily do 5,700 to 6,000 an hour. It's a little better than shovels. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I mean, you'd need a real army to be able to fill bags as fast as that. Well, we don't have an army, but we have something just as good. Air Cadets, front and center, here we go. You open, you fill, you pass. Okay, here we go. So as the feeder comes around, it feeds Sam down the pipe, into the bag. The bag's now full, the twister twists the top. It's secured with a plastic tie. So the guy's gotta do the heavy lifting. Over into the shovel, where it can go off to do the work it's designed to do, building the dike. Okay, let's keep this thing going. Come on, move, move, move. Off to the left. You have brought these cadets from the Region Gliding School at Gimli, Manitoba. Now, this isn't your normal gig for these kids, is it? This actually is part of our program. We're really big into instilling in the cadets a sense of community, not just locally, but nationally, also across the world. Um, a lot of these kids are from different places in Canada. Not all of them are from Manitoba. So the entire idea of the flood risk is new to them. Well, in order to figure out the engineering, I'm joined by Mike Thorsby of the city of Winnipeg and Cadet Shane and Angela, and we are going to build ourselves a waterproof pond. Hey, Mike, we've got a lot of sandbags, but the key really is the polyethylene. Polyethylene acts as the barrier to hold back the water. And then we use the sandbags to lock the polyethylene in place. That's correct. And if you don't do it right, what happens? It leaks. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you don't want that. So we need to build a leak-proof dike here I've got bag number one here. We're working on our base. How do we lay her down? Lay it down at the edge of the poly. Like that? Yep. Where's this one go? It goes on top of the pant and tail here. Okay, so that was locking in place? Yep. Well, so we drop them down so they overlap. It's just like Lego. Overlap our poly. Aha! Uh -huh. This will be see. the start of our seal. OK. That yep. goes down. And now we've got something to hold the poly in place. That's correct. OK. Oh, my God. So while I went for coffee, the crew made a real good dent in the construction of the dike here. They did a very good job. They've woven the poly in between the layers of bags. They've interlocked them. They've alternated the direction of them. So they're all locked together. They're all supporting each other. And they're all the basis for a very good dike. Why is each layer set back a little bit? Well, it's kind of like a little bit of a pyramid. Don't forget, the water is going to be sitting on top of here. It's not just sitting here straight up and down. It's a weight that actually forces the sandbag and the poly into one and makes the seal. And just like a concrete dam that holds water back, it's widest at the bottom because that's where the pressure is the greatest. OK, well, let's see if we can finish up this segment and uh, give it a test. That's okay. what I really want to see. On top. OK, because the poly is critical. Set that down. OK, it's coming. Yeah! Okay, is it gonna hold water? Yeah! Bring in the hose! There we go, okay. Well, check it out, guys. We've built an A1 dike. Is it holding water? Yeah! yeah! Any leaks around the side? No! We saved the town! Yeah! yeah!